The results of the Catherine trial, I think, had a really major impact on clinical practice, given that uh, the uh, effect on, on recurrence was so uh, substantial uh, and, and so broadly seen across subgroups. Uh, it, it, and, and, and lastly, that TDM1 is fairly well tolerated. I think it was fairly easy for oncologists to, to recognize that this was a major advance and should be used uh, relatively uniformly. I think what was particularly interesting is that uh, the benefits of TDM1 over trastuzumab in the Catherine trial uh, were relatively uniform, whether uh, in terms of uh, hormone receptor status, in terms of how much residual disease uh, was there, the benefits were uh, pretty similar. So even in patients who had pretty small amounts of residual disease, less than one centimeter, uh, no nodal involvement at the time of surgery, those patients still had, you know, a relatively similar benefit, you know, roughly half uh, uh, of uh, the recurrence rate compared to trastuzumab. Uh, so in my practice, at, le at least, I typically would use TDM1 in the adjuvant setting for virtually any amount of invasive cancer at the time uh, of surgery. In my opinion, Catherine was completely practice changing. Um, the study was well designed because it really targeted for enrollment those high risk patients whose disease did not completely respond to standard, um, very effective neoadjuvant chemotherapy, trastuzumab, and in some cases, pertuzumab. Those patients have a very high risk of having breast cancer come back as metastatic disease. And the absolute improvement in invasive disease-free survival of about 11% is really extraordinary and I think should compel us to utilize this drug in patients who are high risk and have residual disease after standard therapy. The tolerability of TDM1 is actually quite good in the scheme of things when you're comparing it to chemotherapy. Of course, the attempt clinical trial compared TDM1 to the APT regimen of paclitaxel and trastuzumab, and the efficacy appeared pretty good. Um, the safety, however, does indicate TDM1 is associated with side effects, and so although patients don't feel as well in the uh, paclitaxel trastuzumab arm during the chemotherapy portion as they do when they're getting TDM1. During the maintenance trastuzumab, a woman's quality of life goes up substantially, whereas in the TDM1 arm, patients are still aware they are on a systemic chemotherapy-based uh, regimen. Although it's targeted chemotherapy, there are still side effects, fatigue and nausea and things like this that make a patient totally aware that they're receiving therapy. And I think it's for that reason we saw a higher dropout rate uh, as the trial went on in uh, the patients who are receiving TDM1. I do think that uh, the FDA expansion of the label for TDM1 from metastatic disease to now also include uh, the post-neoadjuvant setting uh, based on the Catherine data uh, was a good thing for, for patients. Uh, again, the, the benefits of TDM1 in this setting are, uh, are really quite clear. Uh, and uh, the balance between toxicity and, and efficacy is, is, is uh, um, again, quite robust. Uh, TDM1 in general is, is fairly well tolerated, so there's not a big cost in terms of, uh, of toxicity compared to trastuzumab. Uh, the side effects are fairly mild, uh, and again, I think overall the risk uh, to benefit ratio strongly favors using TDM1 uh, in this setting, so I, uh, I think we were all pleased to see the FDA uh, expand the label you know, fairly promptly, and, and again, this is the standard of care for most patients.